Hello everybody, it's Ken here and today I wanted to talk about Monster Hunter Rise and specifically I wanted to just talk about the demo and my impressions on it, how I felt about the changes they've made and the new things they've added. The demo period's now sort of over, you can still play it solo but the online portion of the demo is over until at least maybe we see another demo in the future which I think is quite likely based on what they did for Monster Hunter World. But uh, let's just get into it. So first and foremost, I, I was really impressed with the demo. I've been really, really pleased with the changes they've made, the things they've kept from World in particular. It feels like a really smart blend of the more classic Monster Hunter style that, you know, built up to what we saw in Monster Hunter Generations and Generations Ultimate, and also the new style of World and some of the smoother, more flowing movesets, things like that, and the overall quality of life. Uh, I ended up trying all the weapons in the demo, I fought all four monsters in the demo with each, so there were only two quests in the demo, there's a hunt for the Great Zuchi and there's a hunt for Mizutsune, but in the Great Zuchi quest you can also find and fight an Azeros, and in the Mizutsune quest there is a Great Zuchi and there is also a Rathian. So what I did with each weapon is I would test them out for a little bit and then I would do the Great Zuchi hunt and fight Azeros and then move on to Great Zuchi, then I would go into the other hunt, fight the Rathian first and then fight Mizutsune. So before we get into weapon specifics, and I'll talk about each weapon a little bit as we go on, but the, the first main things that stood out to me are of course the new silk bug mechanic where you have these two little bugs that basically function as two charges that you can use and you can use them for all sorts of things. There's movement abilities, you can kind of grapple around with them, you can use them for special weapon skills that kind of resemble hunter arts from generations or you can use them to recover when you get knocked down, and we'll talk about that later as well. The other main thing is just the general quality of life improvements. I would say the quality of life in Rise feels to World what World felt like to Classic Monster Hunter. They've made it even more accessible, even faster to get some of that busy work done. So gathering is really, really fast. You can gather while you're riding around on your Palamute, which we'll talk a bit later. There's so much maneuverability because of the wire bugs, which also sort of makes getting around and exploring very very quick and easy it's going to be the most approachable monster hunter i think even compared to world i think in the demo you don't really get that because the demo does a good job of explaining the new mechanics like the wire bug skills but it doesn't do a great job of explaining classic monster hunter so there's not really any tutorial stuff for the weapons or how the the general flow of monster hunter works so if you come into the demo having not played any monster hunter i think you maybe still be a little bit confused the way that i think a lot of people were when they first jumped into the world demo it doesn't really explain explain itself and until you get a feel for how the weapons play that still can be a bit off-putting. But I think once you push past that and you start learning a weapon and you, you start picking up the mechanics, a lot of the other sort of supplemental aspects around that core combat is going to be a lot more accessible. So the gathering, for example, not only is it quite fast, but one other thing that's changed is that nodes with multiple gathers on them, such as the ore and the bone piles, where you would have to gather three or four times in a row to get everything out, you can now just do one gather and it picks up all four stacks. So it's not just that there's one thing there, you get like three bones at once from a gather. You hit an ore pile once just one dink and then you get everything and it's super fast to collect you can do it while you're riding around on your palomar you do have to stop for a second but it's still so fast that the gathering is going to be even quicker and even easier uh, which i think is good you know running around and gathering stuff out of the world is quite satisfying and i think there was this thing in monster hunter world where you would start to rely too much on your farm because the farm was so strong and may maybe we'll see something similar but the farm is so strong in the late game that you just never really need to pick much up once you get into the late game but i think here it's so quick to gather materials that you can just kind of grab stuff as you're running past and I, that feels like a smart balance of just doing it quickly but still having that feel that you're sort of collecting from the world around you to make your items and your potions and your weapons and armor and that kind of thing. There's also plenty of other things out in the world, creatures that you can interact with. So if you remember the Vigor Wasps from Monster Hunter World, they're these little bugs that you pop and you get a little burst of healing. They're still back and it's good to see them return so they're really useful mid-combat. You can just run up and quickly slap one. You can even do it with your weapon just to get a quick burst of health but there are also some other insects so there are ones that will buff your defense temporarily ones will give you a bonus crit chance they will reduce your stamina consumption uh, which we saw some of in world but now they all kind of have this same just run up and pop them and you get this temporary bonus there are also hunting helpers which are little creatures that you can pick up and use them mid hunt so if you remember the toads in monster hunter world the paratoad the poison toad and the blast toad which i believe was called nitro toad previously you would kick these in world and they would have an effect so the paratoad would put out this cloud of paralysis so now in monster hunter rise instead of just using them on the spot you pick them up and you put them in your pouch 
and you can hold up to five of these hunting helpers at a time and then you can use them mid fight. So the paratoad you can put down wherever you want it, which is a little bit more versatile. So you can take this paralysis and pop it down mid fight rather than having to lure the monster over to it. And there are also a few other ones. So there's a snail called S Cure Go, which is a fantastic name that you can just put down and it basically functions like a health booster from world and it will just heal over time for anyone standing in the area. And there's anti dobras which give you poison resist. Uh, and there's a few other things such as these beetles and the beetles are elemental and they will put temporary blights on the monster. So for example, if you throw the thunder beetle at the monster, it'll put thunder blight on the monster temporarily. And that means that you'll deal bonus impact damage with your attacks and any kind of attack you're dealing to the head can stun the monster. So you'll be able to stun the monster with weapons that maybe ordinarily wouldn't be able to. If you use the water beetle on an enemy, it's gonna water blight them and that will kind of weaken their armor and allow you to do more damage to parts that maybe are normally a little bit tougher. The other form of helpful wildlife you'll see out and about are called spirit birds and they're these little glowing fireflies that are red or green or orange or yellow and they give you a boost for the rest of the hunt and it's quite a small boost to either your health, your stamina, your attack or your defense. But you can run around and collect these as you're going up to fight the monster and it will bump up your health, your max health or your max stamina or your attack or your defense value and it lasts I think until the end of the hunt or until you die I believe. So you can kind of just ignore these or you can kind of grab them as you go past but if you're having a particular trouble with a fight and you need that extra bit of help you can go around and you can probably find a route because they seem to be in the same place every time you can probably find a route on the way to the monster that will let you really buff up your stats a little bit more kind of in the way that you would drink the demon drug and the armor drug before a fight these are going to provide similar benefits so uh, it'll be interesting to see whether that's something that people adopt in terms of whether the time taken to collect them is worthwhile but i think if you're sort of a casual player you're probably going to want the benefits that they offer and they're pretty easy to pick up because again getting around is very quick with the wire bug and also riding the palamute and the palamutes are really fun so they kind of work like the raider ride in iceborne except where the raider ride was automatic and it would just go where you told it to you have full control of the palamute and you can drift it which gives you a speed boost which is very fun it's very mario kart style you're like you hold the drift down and then as you fire off you get this boost of speed and you can gather on the palamute you can sharpen your weapon on the palamute you can use items and potions and the palamute can also climb up the walls which gets you around very quickly and then you combine that with the ability to grapple and run up walls using the spirit bug you're going to be able to get around and collect these spirit bugs really quickly and they've also said that the item that collects the spirit birds which is called a petal ace uh, you will be able to change this out and seems like that will affect how strong the buffs are so maybe you'll want one that makes your health pickups even stronger or maybe you'll want one that gives you better attack buffs so you get more value out of picking up the attack spirit Birds. So there's going to be some customization there too. Speaking of the maps, we'll just go off the map in the demo. It seems they're a little bit smaller than the ones in World and they're more comparable to the style of Generations, although obviously they now have this complete interconnected world rather than being distinct zones with loading screens between them, which for me is a huge improvement. It actually sounds like originally when they started designing Rise, it was closer to the classic Monster Hunter style than they were distinct zones. But after the success of World, they decided that they wanted to have a full interconnected world. Personally, I prefer that. I think it's more satisfying to have this feeling of being in a complete world and while the loading screens were sometimes helpful because you would be able to escape from the monster temporarily they've now got enough other ways to escape especially with the new silk bug mechanics that really I think it's best to move away from that and have this more complete experience of, a, of an interconnected world. There's enough size to them that the maps feel big without being overwhelming in the way that some of the world maps could be so I don't think you're really going to get lost in them the same way that you would get lost in world but even within the size of the map that you explore in the demo there's still quite a lot of verticality because there's this big mountain in the middle and you obviously don't really go up there very often for combat there is an area a little way up that seems like it could be a nest for a flying wyvern but most of the exploration up there is going to be to get rarer materials or maybe try and collect a few more spirit birds before a fight or to get some specific resources that are up near the top of the mountain maybe there'll be a few quests that take you up there for specific bits and bobs as well but there is also a verticality across the map so the back of the map also had a mountain range and that's where Rathian would fly up and nest right near the back. It also seems pretty likely that maps will have multiple camps in them, the same way they do in Monster Hunter World. So there's already a space in the demo map which seems like it would have a second camp in it and presumably you'll have to build that before you can go there but once you can go there you can fast travel to camps at any time as long as you're not mid-combat and that means that between the fast travel and being able to get around quickly with the wire bug you should be able to still get around quickly even if you choose not to bring a palamute with you either if you're playing solo or if you're just playing with the palicos instead and you don't have a mount to run around on. It seems like you should still 
we'll be able to get around pretty quickly because the maps aren't that big. And speaking about the movement, I think we should talk a little bit more about the silk bugs because they are kind of the core of Monster Hunter Rise's new mechanics. So the way the silk bugs work is that you'll see down at the bottom of the screen, right in the middle, you have these two little bug icons and they're your two silk bugs. By default, you have two. You can pick up a third in the world and you'll have three temporarily. It seems like if you pick up another one, it just resets the cooldown on how long you have that third one for. You can't pick up a fourth at the same time, but maybe there'll be armor skills that let you do that later. And so then you can employ these silk bugs for very various things. The first thing you can do with them is you can use them to grapple around. So you hold down the left trigger and then you hit X and you will grapple upwards or you can hold the left trigger and push A and you will grapple straight forwards. The recharge time on this is pretty quick, so you can use this to get around. If you grapple up onto a runnable wall, which is a lot of the walls in this game, you can climb almost anything, you will start sprinting up the wall. And as long as you hold down the sprint button, you'll actually run quite far. It took me a while to get used to this. At first, I wasn't holding down sprint, and I was jumping off the wall very quickly. If you hold down sprint, you can get a little bit further up the wall. Your hunter will eventually jump off. But then what you can do is you can hit A and you will mid-air grapple. And the mid-air grapple hangs you in place and you will stay there swinging until you run out of momentum. And once your momentum stops, you will drop. But this doesn't use a silk bug. And so what you can do is you can hold ZL and hit X to grapple up. Or if you want, you can manually target with the right stick and hit ZR. And that will shoot the wire bug exactly where you're aiming. And this will pull you up onto the wall. You sprint up the wall. And then when your hunter jumps off, you tap A to hang in midair for a second. Swing back in. Then you hit B to jump off that little hang. And you can grapple back into the wall again and keep running up it. And you can get really far up and climb big walls in this way. You can to do this when you're getting around you get into this little rhythm and i started to build my muscle memory i will say it took a little bit of time to get used to the feel of the wire bugs what i did was i spent a little while in the starting little zone where you're next to the tent i would grapple up onto the tent and practice grappling off the tent and swinging in midair and you get into this rhythm and so the button combination usually is you're gonna jump off something either just by sprinting off it or pushing b to roll and jump off it and then you use zl and x and that will grapple you forwards you push a without zl just to hold in midair and then as you swing forward you hit B and you jump forward again and then you can ZL and X A B ZL and X A B and obviously you can only do it two or three times depending on how many zilk bugs you have but you can get really a lot of distance out of that and you can also do it just from standing on the ground and still sort of ping yourself forward a little way which is great by default but if you also want to use it in combat you can use it to close in on a monster when the monster is a little bit further away from you if you put your weapon away and you want to just get in on the monster quickly you can grapple up and then immediately you're going to be able to do a plunging attack there are two other things you can do with the silk bugs the main one is going to be the silk bind attack which we'll get into as we speak about the weapons a bit more because that's what the real meat and potatoes but maybe the actual most useful thing especially for a new player but I think just in general is going to be the silkbind recovery so once you get knocked down by a monster you will be able to just hit ZL and B and grapple yourself out of trouble and you can do this almost immediately or you can do it from lying on the ground after you've been knocked down now some attacks in particular I noticed this with Mizutsune it will actually lock off the recovery and I think what this probably is is some kind of hard knockdown that's just more difficult to recover from so it's not a complete get out of jail free card but in a lot of situations it can really save your bacon there are so many times where I got knocked down in a dangerous position I knew I was going to be getting up into an attack you think about in world the number of times where you get knocked down and you can't get up immediately because you know there's imminent danger so you stay lying on the floor but then you realize oh I'm regardless of what happens here no gigante is rearing up and it's going to be really difficult for me not to get up into this attack and here in rise you can just use the silkbind recovery and a lot of the time it will save your bacon not only does it pull you out of danger but it will also put your weapon away so you can immediately land and start healing or you can use a recovery item there are so many times where i would get hit by a rathian fireball or i would get poisoned by rathian and you can immediately wire bug recovery land on your feet and immediately you know start rolling the fire off or take an antidote or a herbal medicine to get rid of the poison it's so so helpful there are so many times in this demo where i am absolutely would have died in world and I didn't hear because I was saved by the Silkbind recovery. It is a very, very powerful ability. It doesn't have to be purely defensive though. I mean, if you if you feel confident in your ability, you can either use it when you get knocked away to immediately just get back in on the action. Or for example, if you do a wake up and your wake up attack blows up some bombs that you set down and that sends you flying backwards, you can 
can immediately grapple back in and start wailing on the monster while it's just getting up from the bomb wake up. So there's a lot of versatility to the silk bind recovery. The thing you have to be careful with is that obviously you can only use it if your silk bugs are on cooldown. And some of the silk bind attacks that the weapons have either will use up two of your silk bugs at once, which means that if you haven't collected the third one, you're going to be out for a while. Or in some cases, they will have longer recovery times for the silk bug after using them. And so that means this is really nice balance where you have to commit when you use a silk bind attack to not being able to recover afterwards. So if you use a silk bind attack in a really dangerous position and get knocked out of it, then you're going to leave yourself in a position where you've been knocked down and you don't have your recovery tool and then you're going to be very vulnerable. So I think the balance is actually really nice. The cooldowns on the silk bug combined with the ability to pick up a third one temporarily means there's a really good balance of deciding when you're going to use them for mobility, when you're going to use them for special attacks and when you're going to keep them to be safe to get back out of a hairy situation. The other big thing of course is the silk bind attacks and the silk bind attacks are these two different abilities that each of the weapons have that are mapped to ZL and X and ZL and A and you use them when you have your weapon out. Obviously that's the same controls as when you're grappling but uh, the grapple is done when your weapon is put away. If your weapon is out and you push ZL and X or ZL and A you will do your two silk bind attacks. The distinction here is that if you're using one of the gunner weapons, the bow, the heavy bow gun, the light bow gun, then because the ZL button is your regular aim button, instead you have to hold R and then push X or A to do the silk bind attacks for those three weapons. You can swap this around in the menu options and have it consistent, but then obviously your aim button is going to be different. So it's going to be down to personal preference. I know some people who use gunner weapons tend to stick to gunner weapons. Personally, I switch back and forth and I actually found that I preferred the default of keeping ZL as my aim button and then just having R for the silk bind attacks on those weapons. Once you get used to them, it's not too much of a problem. It is a little bit weird because you have to rewrite your muscle memory for those weapons specifically, but it's not the end of the world. Another key feature of the silk bind attacks is that they deal mounting damage. It's not really mounting damage in the traditional sense because mounting is a little bit different in Rise, where it's been replaced by this mechanic called Wyvern Riding. And Wyvern Riding feels kind of like a combination of classical mounting and the clutch claw from Iceborne, where you knock down the monster, you can hop on its back and control it and you actually get to do different attacks with the monster depending on which buttons you press so they'll usually have an x attack they'll have an a attack that's a bit stronger and then they'll have a few other ones usually back and x and back and a i tend to find had like some really strong attacks on and you can use these to attack the other monsters attacking one big monster with another big monster that you're riding will also deal wyvern riding damage or mounting damage i think it's called silk bind damage i can't actually remember but uh, it will deal this kind of blue number that contributes towards that that monster being mountable and being ridden and it seems like you can probably only get one of these out per monster per hunt i have heard people say they were able to do two but they had to pretty much focus on it the entire hunt and not do any other damage so realistically i think you're probably only going to get one of these off per monster per hunt but it feels like a really nice balance between the traditional mounting and the clutch core i will kind of miss traditional mounting to some extent but it kind of works similarly if you don't have anything to attack with the monster that you're riding you can just run it into a wall and not only can you do this once but you can do it three times in succession and then just grapple back on spin it into another wall slam it again and just keep doing this to knock it down and that works well if you don't have another monster to attack and you don't want to go wandering around the map but i will say the monsters get around these maps really quickly like i say the maps aren't that big but the monsters move around them really fast so it's quite quick just to go and find another monster and also the monsters that are not your main target on the hunt seem to be easier to get a wyvern ride on and so you can grab one of those early on take it over to your target and really pummel your target and you will do a lot of damage. Now one of the main gripes people have with the clutch core in Iceborne and particularly higher level players have with it was that it felt kind of this essential mechanic that everyone had to participate in because it was just inefficient not to get on the monster to weaken its hide so your attacks did more damage and you got more affinity out of your attacks. You had to slap it to enrage it to get those agitator bonuses. You had to be slamming into the wall because it just did so much damage you couldn't really avoid it. And here it feels like actually it's balanced in such a way that while it is quite strong to do, grabbing a monster and moving it over to another part of the map to attack is going to take a little while and getting on the monster and slamming it about takes a bit of time and so you might find that while it is a good thing for the average player to do because it's a good way to get some really really easy high damage values, the more advanced speedrunners and the high level players will actually probably find that it takes long enough to pull off, that it's quicker just to ignore it and just fight one on one or maybe they'll just grab it, do one quick slam into the wall and then attack it while it's down for 
more damage. So it feels like quite a nice balance where it's fun to execute and it is quite a strong way to swing the fight in your favor if you're a newer player or just an average player and you just like making the monsters fight. It's a good time, you know, but it doesn't feel so strong that it's essential for every player to engage with it if they just prefer getting in there with their weapon and just getting it done. Right, that's been quite a long time and I haven't actually talked about any of the weapons yet which is kind of what I want to do is speak to each weapon individually and really this is just going to be looking at the tool sets they have and mostly it's going to be looking at the silk bind attacks. So like I say, every weapon has two silk bind attacks and the important thing to note here is that we already know both from things we've seen in trailers and information people have pulled out and in interviews and such that there will be more silk bind skills that we haven't already seen. So the way it seems like it'll work is that you will pick two silk bind skills and it may well be that one of them is fixed for the weapon and then you pick the other one and it'll be kind of like picking your hunter arts in monster hunter generations in addition to this it seems as though weapons might also have options for additional move sets so for example one of the most talked about things in the demo was the hunting horn which has a reworked recital system that's much much simpler than the classic uh, system and we'll talk about it when we get to the hunting horn but it's really really strong it's quite fun to use but I think a lot of classical hunting horn players were lamenting the fact that it felt a little oversimplified compared to the old style where you were playing these specific little tunes and doing recitals and doing your encores and so it sounds as though for those players benefits that those old systems will be in there too and you can pick which style you want to play whether you want to have the old recital system or whether you want to have the more simple system and it'll be interesting to see how those balance out and similarly there are a few other things such as the charge blade one of the notable things it's missing in the monster hunter rise demo is the savage axe mode in iceborne which is where you would spin your axe head around and it made the axe attack stronger and that was a really fun thing to do in iceborne and it's not in the monster hunter rise demo but it sounds as though you'll be able to perhaps swap that out and have that instead of the condensed slash attack which is the one that charges up your sword with your files so if you don't use your sword as much and you'd like to focus on using the axe mode maybe you'll be able to switch out and switch up your playstyle likewise like i said the silk bind attacks sounds like there's going to be more of those we've already seen one of the coolest attacks in the game is this gun lance move where you point the gun lance behind you and you fire yourself forwards towards the monster with it and unfortunately that wasn't in the demo which is a shame because i would have loved to try that out but there were some pretty cool tools nonetheless and no doubt we will see that in the main game you'll be able to switch out your moves so bear that in mind going forwards as I talk about these weapons that there will be more stuff here that we're not seeing currently but all I can do really for now is talk about the weapons as they are in the demo and as they feel in the demo and honestly I enjoyed all of them if you know me from Monster Hunter World you'll know I ended up playing through the main game with the longsword and then I picked up a couple of other weapons and then over time I ended up trying all the weapons and eventually I tried every weapon enough that it clicked and I genuinely really enjoyed playing every single weapon and when there was a weapon that I thought eh, maybe this weapon isn't actually that interesting there would always be a moment where I I'd go back to it and I'd have a good time with it and there are you know there are certainly ones I love more than others but I enjoy playing all the weapons and I've had a good time with all the weapons and honestly while some of them really did stand out to me more than others in Rise I had a good time with all of them as well so I feel pretty confident that whatever weapon you play you're going to have a fantastic time regardless so let's talk about the weapons and here we go I'm going to put these in the traditional monster hunter order just for clarity I didn't actually play them in this order I kind of jumped about going between very very distinct weapons weapon styles and not going through I feel like the traditional monster hunter order kind of has this very gradual progression between the weapon types so each weapon kind of feels somewhat similar to the one that came before it it has this connectivity so I jumped about a lot more when I was playing it but for clarity I'm just going to go through in the order that they appear this is not a preference order this is canonical monster hunter order I guess I don't know this is the order that they always put the weapons in when you play them in the game so first up of course is the greatsword one of the OGs one of the classics and it feels fantastic here I think it's actually one of the weapons that benefits most from the mobility that you get from the wire bugs because just being able to move around so quickly with a weapon that's traditionally quite slow and plodding is very very satisfying and it gives the greatsword just a huge amount of additional mobility where it didn't have it before obviously the biggest loss is probably the slinger burst that goes into the true charge slash it was a really quick way to get into that very very strong attack true charge slash still seems to work the same where if you hit the first part of the slash then the second big hit does even more damage. So you're gonna wanna try and connect with both if you can, unless you're doing a wake up. Other than that though, it feels pretty much like Greatsword. The shoulder bash is still there. You can still bash your way out of a lot of trouble. Just you do take damage, but you have so much armor. It protects you so well. Uh, you can kind of ignore a lot of big attacks to some extent. And I imagine if there's some way to get health augments on your weapon later in the game, which I would imagine there would be, 
then that's going to be really, really strong as a bit of utility for you, just as it was in World. And then the Silk Bind attack. So the first one you get is this big leap in attack, and it kind of functions as a gap closer. And also when you hit the monster with it, you leap up in the air and you can do a plunge attack, which also you can do if you are flying through the air and you just want to do a starting attack. You hit ZR and you do this big down plunge. You can charge up and it does multiple hits. It's great for getting the Wyvern riding mount. It feels very satisfying. And then the second Silk Bind attack is this little dash that sheathed your weapon and then it gives you a damage buff for a little while which is just incredible utility the great sword is inherently kind of a hit and run weapon where you're setting up you're going for that one big hit and then you're moving away as soon as the monster isn't where you want it to be you're going to want to move you're going to want to sheath so that you can move around a bit faster again because you've walked so slowly with your weapon out and then you're going to want to set up and do your attacks again so being able to just really quickly not only put your weapon away but also dash out of trouble and you get a damage buff at the same time you're really just going to want to use this all the time i think that's really going to be one of those skills that i can't see a reason why you wouldn't just incorporate this into your rotation most of the time okay Moving on to the Longsword, which of course, as I said, is my main weapon in Monster Hunter World. It keeps pretty much all its tools from Iceborne. It even has the EI attacks, which I wasn't necessarily expecting to come through. The EI sheath, which then you can go into the regular slash, which still builds up your meter. And then there's also the counter slash, which is even stronger, which doesn't seem to spend a level of your spirit meter now if you miss. So it actually now bears more resemblance, if anything, to the traditional round slash from the end of the spirit combo. And it's, it's a really nice feeling to have that. The one change they have made is that you can no longer do the standard thrust into the jumping helm breaker and instead you do it from one of your silk bind attacks so the way that this works is that one of your silk bind attacks is a leap in attack that hits the monster and if you hit it you jump up in the air and then you can either just do a regular down slash as you come down and this will then cause your meter to build up slowly over time or if you have a level of spirit meter you can use it to do the helm breaker and it feels really good to pull off the hitbox feels really consistent even in times where in world i would have expected it not to hit I was still landing those even in sometimes I would get knocked out as I landed on the ground and I feel like oftentimes in world if you get hit out of the helm breaker at all even after the slash has gone through the monster you just wouldn't get the damage and here I was still getting that damage even if I got knocked away after the slash landed and that felt really good as well so overall I'm really happy with the longsword I'm looking forward to continuing to play it the other silk bind move you get is a counter move which has a long window on it so if you're not as proficient with the traditional counter methods obviously longsword already has the foresight slash and it has the ei counter so it didn't really need another counter and maybe that's something you'll swap out later if uh, if that's an option but if you are someone who likes the longsword but finds the counter element difficult to pull off this is a much more forgiving counter the thing i would be wary of is it does leave you pretty open if you time it wrong because the recovery from it is a little bit slow so you can get yourself in trouble with it but overall the longsword feels really good i like where it's at Okay, moving on to the Sword and Shield, which loses its kind of infinite combo potential from World, where you would have the turnaround slash that then went into the thrust, and you could use that to basically keep just swinging forever if you were underneath the monster. You now can't do that anymore. What you can do is you can reorient mid-combo using the spinning reaper, that's the X and A buttons together, which is that big spinning slash, and that does work pretty well. The combos are still fairly short, so losing the infinite combo is a bit of a shame, but you still have a really good flow because the perfect rush is in there you can aerial attack off the perfect rush you can also do the traditional sort of pre iceborne jump back and then leap forward into a bash and do an aerial attack off that which is a much lower altitude leap than the perfect rush one so the way perfect rush works now it's pretty similar in that you still have to tap the button at the correct timing to get the most damage out of it it does feel pretty strong not quite as strong as it did feel in iceborne they have actually nerfed that recently because it was just so powerful but it still feels good to do and when you land the final hit with the perfect rush in Monster Hunter Rise, instead of latching onto the monster and bouncing off it the way you do in Iceborne, you actually now go into a leap and you can do the attacks that you would do from a standard jump back leap in attack. You can do a standard slashing attack, you can come down with a shield bash to do some impact damage and that can be good for knockouts, especially if you've been building up with a few other shield bashes. Or the other thing they've added is you can now do the plunging attack that you used to have to do as a wall run attack in Iceborne and World, where you hit 
hit X and A together and you will do this helm splitter that just plunges your sword straight down. You get loads of hits off it, great for mounting. It does a ton of damage. It feels like the move to use if you have the option. Maybe a little bit harder to land if you're not quite sure about the positioning. And then of course, after landing the attack, you can then just leap back, go into another perfect rush, go into another leaping shield bash, or you can just break off and then move around, reposition, reinitiate as you normally would. The Silkwind attacks feel pretty nice. The first one of them is a jumping in attack, kind of like the longsword has, where you jump in, you hit the monster, you can jump off, and then you can go into one of your aerial attacks, the slash, the helm splitter, or the bash, and then go into your combos from there. The second one is a whirlwind attack that uses two of your charges up, but it's a really nice safety move. Feels like you have quite a lot of iframes on it, a lot of protection, and you can get in, deal a lot of quick and dirty damage. It does use two silk bugs, like I say, which the risk there is, of course, that you leave yourself without any more. For recovery so if you get hit in the time after you've done it you're not going to be able to use the silk bind recovery so always be careful with that but on the whole it feels like a nice move to have if you just want to get in there do a quick bit of dps it's got a really nice big hitbox on it it's very very satisfying very very anime and uh, it's a good time on to the dual blades speaking of anime which get a couple of really nice silk bind moves the first one is a dodge and counter kind of attack where it basically functions like a counter so it's a little dash forwards but if you get hit with it if, you, if it goes through an attack it will hit counter damage on the enemy and you basically avoid all of the incoming damage it's really nice it can go through roars it can go through any attacks basically it is just a really really nice way to avoid big incoming attacks which is something that the dual blades don't traditionally have you know, the way that you avoid stuff is you just have to use your speed and your dashes to get away from stuff and so having a reliable tool that lets you actively counter that stuff and hit back is incredibly potent the other thing you get with the dual blades is this close range move where you stick a kunai into the monster and you have to be very very close to get this and then after a few seconds it will explode and it does more damage based on the number of times you've hit that part of the monster before the explosion happens and so really it feels like this is a move that you want to use during an opening where the monster is exhausted or they're knocked down or they're stunned or whatever and you just get in you stick the kunai in and you just pummel on it and then it blows up and it's just an extra bit of dps it feels pretty good for that i don't think you would use it that much during regular combat even if you do just stick it in and then it blows up and you don't actually get to attack it beforehand it still does decent damage but i think for the commitment that it takes you probably want to use it when you have a big opening already the other two big things of note for me for the jewel blade are firstly when you get knocked down if you're in demon mode you will actually come out of it so you remember in world in particular if you get knocked down in demon mode your stamina will just keep draining away because you're still stuck in demon mode whereas now your stamina will recover it feels less punishing when you get knocked down in demon mode and then the other thing obviously in world there was the wiggly litchi you could eat and that would reduce your stamina consumption that's basically still in rise in the form of the new stamina use endemic life you just go up to it and you pop it and your stamina reduction is going to go down so you're using less stamina in demon mode and when you do your attack which is a really nice thing to have with the jewel blades and of course any other weapon that consumes stamina a lot but uh, jewel blades one of the most notable ones Moving on now to the hammer, another one of my absolute favorite weapons. It feels like they've kept that core simplicity of the hammer that everyone loves, but they've increased the utility a little bit. It's actually one of the few weapons that has kept a sliding attack. You can slide down hills in Rise, but most weapons no longer have attacks that specifically come off of a downhill slide the way that all the weapons did in World. But the hammer still has that spinning hammer attack where you leap in the air and you just flip over and over and over like your Sonic the Hedgehog, which is great fun. It's a great damage attack lots of mounting potential and that's still here but also you can do it with one of your silk bind moves where you can charge up your hammer beforehand and then you use the silk bug to fling yourself forward and spin from anywhere so now you can do that move basically wherever you are which is really nice it's good to have that ability to just pull off one of the hammer users favorite moves anywhere you are which is very satisfying the other silk bind attack you get is a big leap in the air and an overhead slam it feels pretty good it's quite satisfying you come down with this big impact crater. I'm not quite sure how I feel on it damage wise at the moment. It'll be interesting to see how it works out in terms of the actual damage and stun values because I generally found when I had a big opening I was using it because it was new and it was quite satisfying to do but I almost felt like I could have just gotten more damage out of doing standard attack. So it'll be interesting to compare the numbers and see if it's actually a worthwhile skill for specific purposes. I'm sure they wouldn't have put it in for no reason but it is very satisfying if nothing else. The other thing they've done is that in World where 
where you would power charge your weapon before attacking and that would give you a slightly different moveset. They've now changed it so that the hammer has a purple mode and a yellow mode and you'll see the icon under your health bar that indicates which mode you're in and you switch to this in the same way by holding ZR to charge and then pushing the A button and this will switch you between the yellow mode and the purple mode and the purple mode is basically your power charged mode from world so it'll be interesting to see if there was a good case for using yellow over purple the one case you could make in world is that sometimes you just didn't have an opportunity to do the power charge but 99% of the time you were going into power charge and it's interesting because here obviously you avoid the problem in world whenever you put your weapon away whenever you got hit you were getting knocked out of power charge so you would have to go back into it now they're two separate modes you can't be knocked out of purple mode into yellow mode you just stay in the one that you're in until you decide to switch back like I say the purple mode mostly feels like power charge but the big differences are that when you do a full charge if you remember in world if you did a full charge while standing still you would get that triple big bang hit and you still have that here in the purple mode but if you are moving when you let go of the full charge in world that would do the spin attack but in rise that's confined to the yellow hammer mode and with the purple hammer mode you just get this leap forward overhead smash which actually feels like even more utility for purple mode because it gives you another gap closer whereas normally your gap closer is using the big uppercut on the second level of charge and if you go too far to the third level of charge traditionally you just don't have a way to get in quickly if you need to close in for an opening and now you actually have another way to get in on the third level of charge and if you're already in close then you can use the triple big bang so on initial impressions it feels like you would just use the purple mode it's even better than power charge was in world and you would maybe save the yellow mode for fighting large groups of small monsters because obviously you still have that spin attack that's a nice way to quickly take out a load of the little monsters that come around the one other nice reason why you might want to switch is that switching to yellow mode gives you this little dash which can sometimes get you out of trouble so that is a potential reason to switch over but then why you would not switch back yet to be seen maybe yellow mode will be really good for dealing elemental damage or something like that we'll have to wait and see Okay, now let's talk Hunting Horn. Now I saved this one till last. I mentioned that I didn't actually play these in the traditional order. I jumped around and I saved Hunting Horn till last because it was the one everyone was talking about. And as someone who's played a lot of Hunting Horn in other games, it's so much fun. It really is. It's very, very different. And like I say, as far as we're aware, it sounds like the traditional mode will still be in there if you want to play that. But the new mode is so accessible. It is definitely very simplified. So the way it works in the demo, the way this new system works is that your songs are basically to XX, AA, and X plus A, X plus A. So it's just the same note twice in a row for each of the songs. And then the other song is your self-improvement song. And this one just goes on the ZR button. So you push that once, you do a little recital that gets your self-improvement going. So immediately that makes the songs easier to play. And it's also worth noting that where in the old system you would have to cue the song up and then do a recital to activate it. In this, as soon as you play the song, the effect is active. So you don't even have to worry about doing your recital afterwards or anything like that you just hit x and then x you do your attacks and as you're just attacking and attacking you're just going to automatically get these songs which is really really easy to get the effect of there's almost no case where you're not just going to have these buffs active all the time and that's exacerbated by the fact that if at any point you play the three different notes on your stave at once that's the x note the a note and the x plus a note so if you use those three attacks within the last sort of four hits so that all of them are on your stave you will then unlock this other other ability which you can use at any time even if those notes then move off your stave once it's unlocked it's there until you use it and this is a big super attack which plays all of your songs at once so it's even easier even easier just to have everything up all the time which you know does kind of take out some of the feeling of going out of your way to play the individual tunes because really it's not very difficult just to have all of your abilities up all the time all of your buffs going but I think that will encourage more people to play the hunting horn I think one thing that often gets overlooked with the hunting horn is just it's one of the hardest hitting weapons in the game is this big old club that you just whap monsters out in the face just bah, 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 bah. and being able to do that and not have to worry too much about the buffs and just have them work and not feel like you're letting your team down by not being able to get your recitals off is going to be a nice way for new players to get in and then if they want to try the other systems maybe it'll be the case that oh if you use the other systems because the buffs are harder to get off they're actually stronger buffs than the default then that'll be an option for people to get into it'll be interesting to see how they end up balancing that moving on to the silk bind moves the first one is a dashing in attack which will play one of your songs i believe it plays your 
XX song as you dash in. And you also get a big bashing attack at the end, so nice way to close the distance quickly, which again, Hunting Horn doesn't necessarily have. You move pretty quickly, it's worth noting with the Hunting Horn, despite the fact it's a heavy weapon, when you have self-improvement on, you do actually move around quite fast. That's still the same in Rise. Obviously, you've got the wire bug to get you around, but then the Silk Bind attack lets you zoom in quickly and attack while your weapon is out. And then the other Silk Bind move in the demo is an interesting one where you thrust the weapon forward and smack it into the monster, and then this connects a little Silk Bind cable to them, and then you play another attack that does a big burst of damage. And this one will hit wherever the monster moves, so the monster can move away as long as that initial thrust lands on the monster, you will get the damage and it will hit on the part of the monster that that initial attack hits on. But generally speaking, this is something that you use for a big burst of damage when you get an opening. I don't think you're that often going to use it on monsters mid-fight. The one thing you might do is if you can just catch a monster with it as it's trying to run away, then you're still going to get that hit as the monster tries to flee. But generally speaking, I found this was something I was using when the monster got knocked down. I would maybe slide in with the first silk bind attack, hit the monster, do the triple charge super attack that you get, and then I would use the big other silk bind attack to get a big burst of damage off as the monster was just getting back up, and then you would resume your normal combos. It's really fun. Like I say, I can see why some of the more dedicated hunting on players were a little disappointed by the very, very simplified way that the note patterns work, but hearing that there will be an option to have that old system hopefully means that everyone will be satisfied on every level, and it's interesting because I think a lot of people are put off the hunting form because it is simultaneously quite complicated because you have to learn how the recital patterns work, but also it's quite a simple weapon. It only has a few attacks and they don't really chain together in very interesting ways. You just ho bam ho boof ho bop and um, it's very satisfying to use, but it is quite a simple weapon with this other complex mechanic attached. I actually really love it for that, but I can see why it puts some players off. So what they've done is they've simplified the complicated part, but they've also added a few other moves to your arsenal with the silk bind attacks and with this super recital attack that is going to give people a little bit more to play around with. Hopefully this gets even more people playing the hunting horn because I think it's a really fun weapon once you get into it. It does seem like they're really encouraging players to try out weapons they might not have before. This is deviating a little bit from the demo, but they have said in a recent interview that they're going to make upgrading weapons a little easier. They're going to make the resource requirements to upgrade weapons a little bit lighter than they have in past games, which they're doing to try and encourage players to play more different weapons rather than just stick to the same one all the time. And even as someone who has played all of the weapons in World and is prepared to put in the time to make lots of different weapons, I do kind of agree that when you start making all the different weapons, you can kind of get overwhelmed with, well, I'm just going to make, I I've made lots of long swords, I've made lots of hammers, I've made lots of charge blades. I'm only going to make one switch axe, I'm only going to make one hunting horn because I just I just don't want to have to grind out the resources for every different possible build I could do with the other weapons. So you end up kind of limiting yourself a little bit and I think it will be nice to be able to really spread yourself out without feeling like you're spreading yourself too thin. Hopefully that gets more people to try out more weapons because I do really think one of the real joys of Monster Hunter is how differently every weapon plays. And if you play for thousands of hours with one or two weapons and had a great time with the game and you feel like like, okay, I think I've played enough Monster Hunter for now. I think I'll just wait for the new monsters to come out or for the new game to come out and then I'll get back into it. Try out some of the different weapons because if one of them clicks with you and there are 14 of them out there, so there's quite likely at least 10 that you haven't really spent much time with, see what happens. If one of them clicks, it's almost like playing a completely different game and it's one of the really special things about Monster Hunter for me because then you get to go in and fight these monsters that you're familiar with but with a completely new moveset, a completely new style of fighting and that's a real treat. Anyway, I've gone off on a real tangent here, let's get back into it and talk about the Lance. So of course all the Lancers were pretty pleased to see that the triple stab is still there, you can still poke, 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 jump, poke, 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 jump, or you know, poke, 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 counter, whatever's your personal preference or whatever suits the situation. So the one kind of standard new trick the Lance has in Rise is that you can now charge up the sweep attack and that's when you push X and A together, you can do it at any point in the combo, you can poke, sweep, poke, you can poke, poke, sweep and it's this big wide sweep, it's quite good for clearing out the smaller mobs, now you can charge that up for a bit of extra damage. It's okay, I don't know if it'll be enough to make that part of the regular rotation, I feel like it's not something Lancers tend to use a ton, but it'll be 
be interesting to see. It adds a little bit more versatility there. In general, the thing that the Lance gets a lot from the Silkbind skills in particular is additional mobility. Now, the Lance is one of those weapons that when you first start playing it, you feel really constricted in your movement. But actually, when you really learn how to dance with the Lance, you actually feel incredibly mobile. You know, you have your hop, your short hop, your long hop. You also have the shield advances that you can do in different directions. And then you can chain that into the additional forward leap attack. You have the ability to do the charge, which then you can jump or you can sidestep mid charge. You can turn around 180. Watching a more advanced Lancer go to work and seeing the mobility they have available to them is really impressive. And now they have one more very strong tool with the Silkbind Kunai, which you stick into the monster. And much like with the dual blade, you have to be quite close to hit it in the first place. But once it's there, it sticks in for quite a long time. And once it's in the monster, you can just fly to them at any time. And it's a guarding move. So you fly towards them with your shield up and then you can do a jumping attack when you get to them or you can just land and start attacking normally. It really helps with any monster that's hyper mobile and it feels like quite a lot of the monsters in Rise, at least in the demo, are pretty mobile. They run around a lot and so being able to just suddenly close distance in an instant rather than having to worry about repositioning, going into a charge and in particular with Wyvern riding seeming to only come out about once a hunt versus mounts where you could do it multiple times, you're much less likely to be going for those leaping attacks on the sprint from the charge so you probably will want to use this as a way to just close distance whenever the monster gets a little bit away from you. The other thing you get is the Silkbind counter, which is just a quick counter. Obviously, the Lance already has plenty of counter options, but the Silkbind counter buffs your damage for a short while. It seems like a decent amount of damage, but it doesn't last for very long. That said, it's good. It's additional damage. You will likely see the advanced Lancers and the speedrunners looking to use this. I can't see why they wouldn't. You know, as long as your counter timing is pretty good, it seems like a great way to get a little bit of extra damage on the fly. And really, you would probably be able to use it almost as much as you would need to use a regular counter. The power guard, of course, is still in there. And even with the sort of fairly limited amount of stamina you get in the demo, you know, obviously this is a fairly early build, so there's not a ton of stamina. Now, of course, you can go around and pick up some spirit birds before you go into the hunt and grab a bit more base stamina. Or you can grab the bug, which reduces your stamina usage for a while. Both of those will help. But even without those, even with just the basic amount of stamina, the basic stamina usage, the power guard still feels really really strong it blocks things from every direction when you get hit it stops draining your stamina so if you're not familiar with the power guard basically you go into a super guard stance that protects from all directions and your stamina constantly drains rather than being drained on hit however when you do get hit it doesn't knock you out of the guard and instead of taking off a chunk of stamina it actually freezes the stamina drain so if you keep getting whacked you can actually take multiple quick hits in a row and just block them all incredibly safely block a couple of big hits like one of the diablos big double headbutts you're pretty safe against that it seems like it would work just as well here based on the testing that I've done. So Lance feels like that really solid defensive option that it always has been. Even more mobility now and another option to buff your damage. Seems good. Seems very, very solid. Following on from that, of course, we have the Gun Lance. And I really like what they've done with the Gun Lance. They haven't changed this too much either, but they've done a couple of good quality of life things, such as they've added a cooldown meter for Wyvern Fire. So previously, the Wyvern Fire, which is the big sort of charge up move, you would have to look at the weapon itself and see how it was cooling off before you could use it again. Now they just put a meter on screen. It's just a little bit clearer, which is good. It makes it more accessible, and that seems like a good thing to me. The one thing that I had a problem with is that the Wyvern Fire, when you were charging it, the look was uninverted, and I normally have my control controls inverted and I had everything set and I couldn't work out how to invert the look for it. For a lot of people that won't be a problem because I think more people use non-inverted controls but if you do use inverted controls I couldn't work out how to do this. Normally you have enough time to correct for it anyway so it's not a huge deal but it was a little bit weird that that didn't seem to be, there didn't seem to be any way to fix that. Anyway that's a me problem. So moving on to the actual Silkbind skills, the first one is a guard skill which repairs sharpness when it blocks an attack and that feels really great. The gun lance tends to burn through sharpness really quickly especially if you're doing a ton of shelling. So being able to replenish your sharpness during the fight as you go is a really really nice quality of life feature. As any gun lance knows, even if you have a good weapon with good armor skills, it can still be very easy to burn through your sharpness quickly. So anything else that helps replenish that is going to be very, very welcome. The other silkbind attack in the demo is this big sort of devil may cry attack where you leap up in the air with this big uppercut with your gun lance and then you can come slamming back down onto the monster and you can follow it up with a full burst if you want to by pushing A or you can go into a regular sweep with the X button. It's very, very satisfying. It is incredibly 
anime and silly and over the top. You can also fire your lance while in midair, which is, I don't think, actually very practical unless there are some birds that you want to attack. You can actually hang in midair for ages and just shell, 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 and you'll climb higher and higher and higher, and then eventually you'll slam back down. Now, I don't really see any actual reason to do this other than that it's a fun novelty. It would be cool if the longer you hung in the air, the more damage the slam did, because obviously the downside to this is that not only are you basically shelling nothing unless something's up in the air with you, like the uppercut does not knock the monster up in the air with you as far as I can tell, and obviously if you've spent all your shells in midair, you're not going to be able to get the full burst when you come back down. So if there was some way that you could, by doing this, get an incredibly powerful slam at the end, that would be fun. I don't think they're going to do that, but it's a, it's a neat little bonus anyway. Otherwise, that skill feels nice. It's a big high damage attack. It's very silly and over the top. It'll be interesting to see how it works out in the sort of pantheon of damage rotations and whether it's good enough to bust out when you get a big opening. Of course, there is the other gun lance skill that we've seen in some of the trailers where the gun lance is pushed behind the user and you use it to fire yourself forwards. That's not in the demo, so hopefully we'll get to try that out in the full game because it looks pretty cool. Moving on, we have the Switch Axe. I really like what they've done with the Switch Axe. The Switch Axe is one of the last weapons that I really got into in Monster Hunter World. It was one of the ones I tried it out and understood it, but I kind of left it until pretty late into Iceborne, and I really liked what they did in Iceborne. In Iceborne, they really tried to encourage using the axe more because everyone was just so focused on the sword mode. And here, it feels like they've developed that even further, and they really want to encourage the Switch identity of the Switch Axe. So now, when you use the axe slam, which in Iceborne would buff your axe attacks and make them stronger for knocking down monsters, now that axe slam actually buffs the rate at which your sword files charge up. And then conversely, when you fully charge your sword file, which you normally would get more sword damage out of, this also buffs your axe mode. And this works even after you've done a zero sum discharge. So you can use the axe slam at the big overhead flip after you've been doing wild swings. And then once you've got that axe slam buff, you can go into sword mode, charge up your files, do some big heavy sword attacks, and then when the monster's getting back up, you hit off a zero sum discharge, big burst of damage, and then that will take you back into axe mode, and then you'll have a buffed axe that'll give you that bit more mobility to attack the monster once it gets back up. So it's really nice, it really does encourage the switching. They've also changed it so that when you do the wild swing attack and then you hit ZR, which is the big swing attack that used to transform the weapon in Monster Hunter World, it would always transform into sword mode. That now doesn't transform the weapon by default, but you can press the button a second time to transform it so you actually have the option to stay in axe mode which is really nice because when I was playing in Iceborne I would often be playing a very very axe mode focused build and so I wouldn't actually want to switch so I would do this attack because it's a high damage attack and then have to do a transform attack back to get back into axe mode so now you have the option if you want to do that although it does seem that they're encouraging you to switch so it's interesting to know I've gone this far and I haven't even got to talking about the silk bind attack yet which I think speaks to how well that they've actually dealt with this weapon they're really trying to hone in on what the exact exactly the identity of the weapon is and it feels good it feels like it's in a good place in Rise so far I liked where it was in Iceborne and it feels like they're evolving from that going into Rise but we should still talk about the silk bug skill so the first one of those is one which slides you a little way forwards and it also temporarily stops the sword charge meter from draining that's the inside meter in the switch axe icon it's the one that you use up when you're in sword mode and uh, it temporarily stopping that from draining is good it gives you a little bit more time to build up the files it does seem like the file on the sword takes a little bit longer to build even if you've got the axe enhancement on than it maybe did in Iceborne where you can build it up really really quickly. It takes a little bit longer but now but not a ton longer so you have to really focus on that and having this thing that stops the sword mode from draining any meter for a little bit it doesn't last that long but it's really nice to have. The second one is a charge forward that goes into this big sweeping axe attack and I think it will always put you into axe mode regardless of where you were and it also seems to have pretty much full armor on it so you can't be knocked out of it. I believe you will still take damage if you get hit by something so you have to be a little bit careful about what you dive into but it's a great way to go in on a big attack and obviously once you've got your weapons augmented in the later game if you have health regen you probably just tank through some things and just be able to get a big hit in during an opportunity that maybe wouldn't normally exist because it'd be a little bit dangerous to go in on so overall i really like where the switch axe is at now moving on to the other like very complicated melee weapon the charge blade which is obviously a fan favorite charge blade was obviously hugely popular in world and iceborne and it feels pretty much the same here as it did there now it does 
doesn't have the Savage Axe mode. I spoke about this a little bit earlier. It does seem like the Savage Axe mode probably will be in the main game. Maybe you'll have to swap out something for it, such as the element file charge on your sword. But even without that, it feels pretty good. I mean, it's complex enough, but it has that reliable rhythm to it. You know, you're going to charge up your files, you're going to store them. And then depending on your preferred playstyle, you're either just going to line up those big super amped element discharges, or maybe you're going to use Axe mode a little bit to deal a bit of file damage, or you could charge up your sword if you want to focus on doing some more sword attacks and charging up the sword of course stops you from bouncing off even when you're at lower sharpness than you ordinarily would need. Now this is all pretty much standard if you're familiar with the charge blades as I say not too much has changed there but the silk bind attacks really feel quite nice. The first one of them is a slide forward that immediately puts you into axe mode. You can use this to then go into your regular sweeping axe attacks or you can transition into the super amped element discharge and this is really nice it's good utility because obviously sometimes you'll get a knockdown and you'll want to go into the SAED uh, and you need to position correctly for it and, and traditionally maybe you'd use the sliding slash or something like that to get into position. Now you have this other way that you can slide into a position or you can close distance on a monster if it's a little further away and then you can transition straight into that super amped element discharge if you want to do that and get off your big high damage attack. Then the other silk bind move is a counter that only blocks one hit but if it blocks something it immediately just fills up all of your files and I'm not talking just you know charging them up to red so that then you can store them. It gives you just a full set of files straight away. It feels really strong. It's such a quick way to build meter. I mean, it doesn't take that long to fill up files and then store them, but just to get the filled files immediately like that off a single counter, it feels so good that I'm actually kind of shocked that there's only one silk bug charge to use and not two. Uh, <laughs> that said, there is a slight caveat in that it only blocks a single hit, so if a multi-hit attack is coming in and you block the first one, you will get hit by the second one. So you have to be a little bit careful about when you use it, but it still feels very, very strong. A lot of attacks are only single single hit attacks and being able to just block them and immediately get a full charge of files feels really really nice. So two thumbs up for that. Now moving on to the insect blade it's fundamentally fairly similar to the insect blade from Monster Hunter World except that of course because this is a demo they give you a hellishly slow kinsect that is a nightmare to use and yet despite that it actually was still one of my favorite weapons to use in the demo and that's because they gave it a really fun new trick which is a silk bug skill which guarantees a heal if you can hit the monster with it so you do this backflip and the silk bug will bring any extract it's currently carrying along with a heal back from the monster and it's a really really nice sustain heal now usually with the insect blade you don't tend to pull heals out of the monster a lot of monsters don't have big points to pull green extract which is the healing one so it tends to be a fair niche application but being able to reliably just get lots and lots of healing is a really nice sustain tool and especially as insect glaive can be one of those weapons where you're flying all about the monster and doing all these flippy attacks and sometimes you will take little bits of chip damage here and there so being able to just heal that as backup is really really nice and even though I was using this very very slow kinsect it actually felt pretty good to you. The other silkbind skill is not something that I really would write home about it's a leap forward it's a vault that pulls you forward with the silk bug it's fine it seems to go a little bit further than the standard ZR and B vault up into the air and then dash forward. So if you need to close distance on a monster, it's quite good for that. But Insect Glaive doesn't have any trouble getting in the air anyway, so it doesn't feel quite as useful. Whereas the first skill that heals you is really, really nice. And I did really like the Insect Glaive. I'm very, very hopeful that once I get a faster Kinsect, that I might actually really get into Insect Glaive in Rise. And so finally, we move on to the three gunner weapons, light bow gun, heavy bow gun, and the bow. Now, of course, I mentioned this before, but the one difference here is because ZL is your aiming button with all three of these weapons, if you want to do a silk bind skill when you have your weapon out, you need to push the R button instead of the ZL buttons. You can change this in the menus, but I actually found it easier just to learn how to use the R button for these specific silk bind skills rather than going back and forth on my aiming, because having ZL on the aiming ZR to shoot feels nicer to me at least. So, the light bow gun is pretty much the same as Iceborne. It's difficult to judge the bow guns without really getting to see builds because I feel like bow guns are so build focused and it's about, you know, honing your bow gun and selecting the skills that you want on your bow gun and which ammo types you're going to use. And so, using early level ammo is not really the best way to get a good feel for the bow gun. But the elemental ammo seems nice. They've added Pierce elemental ammo, which wasn't really available in the demo, but you can see that you can craft it. So, it'll be interesting to try that out. The silk bow mobility is actually really where the light bow gun shines. So, you get one skill 
Spiral, which is just a slide forwards and gets you in on the monster. You can use it to evade, but probably you're going to want to use it to get in because after zooming in on them, you can then do this big fire off attack that apparently is quite good for cutting. It does slicing damage to cut off tails and such. I didn't actually get to really try it for that that much, but it feels good to slide in on the monster and just bam. If you get a good opening and you don't have anything else to do, maybe your ammo is out and the monster has uh, a moment opening, you can slide in on them and just get some damage done. Also, if you're using a close range build like Spreadshot, it's a nice easy way to get in quickly on the monster. The other Silkbind skill, however, is maybe even more exciting, which is it flings you up into the air. And at first, it's a little difficult to know quite what to do with this, but you can shoot in midair and that's okay. It's nice to kind of pop off a couple of shots in midair. Feels kind of cool. One thing you can do is that you can use the cluster bombs and normally where cluster bombs have that big arc where they have to pop up in the air and slowly come back down after you've slowly set up your shot you have to crouch down ping it up in the air and all that you can use it in midair and just carpet bomb as you fly over the monster that's incredibly satisfying maybe even more satisfying is as you fly over the monster you can fire your mine by pushing a so you know the light bow gun has these mines that you place into the ground and then they will be detonated by attacks from you or by the monster hitting them and it'll do a bunch of damage to the monsters now if you fire these while you're flying over the air with a silk bind skill it will actually fire down and they'll either stick into the ground or if they hit the monster they will stick to the monster. So this is kind of this new aspect where you can put the mines from the LBG straight onto the monster and then just shoot them directly. And that's really fun. It feels really good to pull off. So those two silkbind skills make me really, really optimistic about the light bow gun. It's actually been one of my favorite weapons in late game Iceborne. So I'm really looking forward to trying it out in rides. I think I'm going to spend a ton of time with it, maybe even early on, just because some of those silkbind things are so much fun. And if you're a big gunner fan and you thought that sounded exciting, well, I've got news for you. The heavy bow gun is also fantastic. Again, it's going to be tough to really judge it properly without trying builds out for real, but I really like what they've done with it. So the first thing they've done is they've added a charge to basically every ammo type. You can charge up and it will do extra damage. You can hold the shot and then you can fire it off. And one of the interesting things about this is the bow gun in the demo, the heavy bow gun has a shield on it and you can still block while you're charging a shot up. So if you want to charge a shot up and then the monster comes in and and catches you off guard you can still block the attack which is really nice now the dps when you charge up the attack it does seemingly about twice the damage and it works on even stuff like sticky shots you can't charge cluster shots of course because it's not really a good way to do that but basically everything else that you fire off normally can be charged you can probably get off more damage just by fire 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 rather than charging your shots but the nice thing is that you don't always have a moment to shoot. You know, maybe you want to line up your shots so that you actually hit a specific part of the monster. Maybe like as the monster's turning around and you can't quite see the bit you want to shoot at or you're bringing your aim in, you can charge your shot up and even if you don't fully charge it, you're going to get some extra damage off it. So I think once you get used to using the charge and maybe people will find that when the actual game comes out, maybe you'll be able to use focus builds that let you charge up faster and maybe that will actually make the damage on the charge shots even better and it will become worth using all the time. Most of the time I was just shooting normally, but if I ever had an option where it's like, oh, actually, I, I want to shoot at the head and I can't quite see the head, I'll just charge my shot while the monster's turning around and then blast it for a bit more damage. Also, if you're using ammo that is more limited, maybe if you're doing sticky shots and you are worried that you're going to run out of ammo and you don't want to have to go back to camp because going back to camp is a huge DPS loss because you're not doing any damage to the monster while you're going back and restocking. So if you want to clear out the monster quickly, maybe you kind of say, okay, I need to charge at least 10, 20 of my sticky shots to be able to have enough sticky damage to finish off the fight. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out in the long game. And then of course we come to the two Silkbind skills in the demo. One of these is just a slide forward. It doesn't do anything fancy afterwards like the light bow gun does. It has, you can do a melee attack after it or you can put your weapon away. It says the weapon goes away quicker. It looks like maybe the weapon is put away a little bit quicker, but it's so small if so that I couldn't really tell. So either that's not working as intended or it is just a tiny increase. But regardless of that, just having that mobility is really useful. The heavy bow gun is obviously such a slow weapon. You move around so sluggishly that just being able to have this quick mobility without having to put your weapon away is really nice. And then the other silkbind skill is a counter move. Now it's unclear if you will need a shield for this. Like my guess is that you might actually need to have a shield on your heavy bow gun to be able to use this skill because if not it could make a shieldless heavy bow gun really really strong because it's a counter that blocks any attack and then after that you go into a charge shot and you can hold the charge shot for a long while if you hold it for more than about three seconds or so it will just fire off on its own but you can just charge it and charge it and then when you fire it off has quite good range on it seems to go pretty far and it does a huge amount of damage and it doesn't as far as i can tell use any of your ammo so it's a really really powerful 
powerful tool because anytime a big strong attack is coming like Rathian's tail spin or anything like that you can just counter it block the damage and then immediately turn around and just boom and this huge amount of damage it's fantastic it's very very satisfying I absolutely love it I'm gonna use it a ton I think again it does seem to block just the one move so you do have to be careful about multi-hit attacks coming in and choose when you use it wisely it seems like you can sidestep out of it if you want to and the other thing to note is that the heavy bowgun also gets a sidestep after any shot you can just sidestep 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 and you can use it basically as long as your stamina lasts and it actually gives you a surprising amount of mobility alongside the other silkbind skill which is very very interesting it makes it almost feel like you're using a lance but it's a big bowgun and i am again very very excited to try the heavy bowgun out i'll be interested to see how things actually play out once we start to see what the armor skills look like and what the late game builds for the bowguns are but initial impressions are fantastic now moving on to the bow, again this is one where without some of the skills that you can get for the bow and knowing what those skills are, it's tough to tell, it's missing a couple of tricks, you know, it's a little bit different than before, so you don't have the coconuts, and again maybe this is something that we'll see back in the full game, you don't have those like little, I like to call them coconuts, but the little balls that rain down from the sky when you do the arc shot, and instead when you do an arc shot you get this mist that comes down, and you can run into it, your teammates can run into it, and it will give them a heal over time effect that is really Really strong and it actually makes the bow an interesting support weapon because you can use this I tried a little bit of multiplayer with the bow and obviously if your friends are in on the monster and they're all up close to it you can fire off this arc shot on top of it and just provide this healing cloud that just keeps them sustained over the course of the fight it's a little difficult to show off the exact flow of the bow in rise without going into huge detail so there are people who have already done that better than I would so go watch Gaijin Hunter or go and watch Arix if you want to see a better breakdown of the actual flow of the bow but I think it feels a little different I don't quite know how I feel about it. I haven't settled on it yet. So you can't now start off with a spread shot the way that you do in Monster Hunter World. And also, you now do two spread shots in a row. So it's you'll do shot, shot, and then a spread shot, and then a slightly bigger spread shot. So you're oftentimes looking to do like a spread, spread, dash, shot, spread, spread, dash, shot. And obviously, again, without having a ton of maximum stamina, I think maybe more than things like the lance and the dual blades, it actually really does hurt the bow to not have a lot of of stamina on the default build you can get the peeper sex which are the insect that decreases your stamina usage that helps a little bit but i think maybe their theory was they wanted you to focus on one of the new silkbind skills which is a backflip that lands you in a little stance and you have to stand still afterwards you can't move otherwise it cancels the effect but while you're standing after the backflip your stamina regens incredibly quickly so it's a good way to attack 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 and then you backflip out of danger and then you land you let your stamina recharge and then you move back into the fight again it feels good it, it does have this new rhythm to it i think works well once you get used to it but it took a bit of reprogramming to get my head into that game once you get used to it in the rotation i think it'll be fine it's just a case of getting used to the new flow of the bow but i actually think that once you get used to that it will have its own unique feel to it and that will be nice and the other silkbind skill is easy to explain it's called herculean draw and it slides you a little way forward into a draw attack and then also gives you a damage buff that lasts for actually a pretty decent amount of time you'll see your hands kind of glowing after you use it and that lasts for a good amount of time so no reason not to use this it's uh gonna be just a straight damage buff and you're gonna use it most of the time i think so while i wasn't completely sold on the new bow rotation i think it's a case of getting used to it maybe seeing how it actually pans out letting people work out the optimal rotation for the bow attacks maybe there's things like bow charge plus on the armor skills that'll help to make the bow feel even better i do really like the two silkbind skills they both fit into the rotation very very well and so i think there is a lot to look forward to in the bow as well it's just going to be a case of this is one that feels a little bit more different kind of like the hunting horn it doesn't feel like it used to it'll be interesting to see if there is a bow setup that's a little bit more like the bow in world or whether this is the way forward either way i think there's still a lot to like here so you know while this was the weapon that maybe took me the longest to adapt to because it did feel slightly different from what my muscle memory was used to i still enjoyed using it and i actually spent quite a while with it in multiplayer because of the arc shot heal felt nice sort of getting that off and being very supportive all right, that's pretty much everything. And <laughs> I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. I don't really need to say anything else. I talked about all the general preamble before we got into the weapons and then I went into exhaustive detail there. This video is way too long. So I'm gonna wrap it up here and say, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I've been Ken, Monster Hunter Rise seems amazing and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.